This is our traditional demand planning model. And we're going to pick this up really in earnest in a future webinar where we go through this model front to back. Just to give you a brief flavor on the kind of things that are possible in here, where we land here is a demand management overview. And then there are a variety of different functions in this model from bringing in actuals to creating statistical forecasts to managing customers and products, and then adding some additional forecasting levels. The function for this, for the purposes that we're gonna talk about in our staffing model is really to get that demand right. So just gonna go quickly in here to scenarios and show a comparison of two different snapshots of the actual demand plan. So here we have in here, order histories, we have shipment histories, and we have point of sale history data. Whenever that scenario is chosen, that will be decided as maybe it's the current forecast or the most updated live forecast. These values here will be sent to the host of the other Anaplan environments. And it's not just the staffing model. Maybe this goes to a sales planning model, but in a situation like retail where it's so heavily reliant on demand, getting this model and this data trustworthy and right is really that starting point. So similar to like we talked about in what getting the employee module enables for scenario planning, it's the same kind of thing for demand planning and what that enables at the store level. But now I'm gonna shift over just in a different tab in the same and a plan workspace. So think of these as different Excel workbook in the same kind of macro enabled environment, but no macros or Excel here. So where we land here is a process overview for retail scheduling optimization. And in here we have a situation that takes into account COVID and some of the retail difficulties that brought to the forefront through COVID. So here we have this, the hierarchies in here are by region. So we have region or areas rolling up to regions, rolling up to total country. And just gonna walk through this model here. So what we're looking at, we have a couple different scenarios in here and I'll show those scenarios on this adjusted store demand. So here we have this broken out by customer visits per region, customer visits, average spend, and then actual sales. So the sales number would be fed as we hit on in the demand piece in the last model, this sales piece would be fed from that model. So we're bringing in different demands and sales actuals and forecasts, uh, adjusted forecasts, and then back to normal prior year actuals for reference in here. And then applying by those different regions, any other kind of forecasts that we would need to do at a more regional level on top of that. So say that we're in Pacific, which is what we're selected here, we have the sales increase driver. We want to apply this to the actual forecast that came through in order to better predict how we need to staff stores at this level. So we also have a gradual build, sales increase, and then maybe just a, a manual input. And we can apply these different drivers to each of the different regions as a way to layer on forecasts on top of the demand that came in from the previous model. So as we work our way through this, now we push down to actual store revenue. So started with the demand plan, either at the product line or at the store level in the first model, worked our way to a regional roll up on the previous dashboard within this model. And now we're at an individual store. So working our way down to the individuals that are going to be working in these stores. And in here we have a couple of different scenarios. So our first scenario is steady. So this assumes no COVID, things are back to normal or a back to normal scenario post vaccine. And here we're at an individual store. And if we select steady, this is no social distancing. And here in the, in the distancing only, we applied some clearance requirements and impacts to staffing and assumptions around this as a way to impact potential lost revenue. So here we see for each of the different roles, it's checkout counter, main aisle, shopping aisles, loading dock, everything we would need at a retail store, and then some assumptions around customer to associates, area footprints, and then max occupancy for the store. So using that demand forecast to generate who is able to be in these stores in order to meet that demand forecast. And if you think about it, here's a perfect situation related to COVID, but there also could be situations for promos or holidays or different types of things that would be specific to a store that you could model versus your 
typical or steady state to be able to scenario plan right in here as you need it. So the next dashboard is the employee roster. Uh, two webinars ago, we talked about what getting the employee roster right in Anaplan kind of enables. So for this dashboard, for this portion, we would leverage that information of getting that employee roster right. But this is really more for scheduling here. So in here, this can be a piece that the actual sales associates interact with. So they could come in and say, if I'm irons here, then I can select by each individual day, whether I can work day shift or night shift, or whether if I'm completely unavailable, we'll show in a second how an employee can actually enter PTO. But this set just sets the framework for when an employee is actually available to work in an individual store. This is just a dashboard to demonstrate how an employee could enter PTO in the system. So all of this really can be linked together. So by leveraging our demand plan feeds, our store level forecast, our employee roster collection creation and another model feeds this employee details here. And then an employee can come in here and fill in whatever attributes about their employee details that are required, or perhaps this even links to a source system. So how to reach these individuals, what if they're available for day or night, what their home location is, what stores they can be staffed into. Of course, this could be multiple locations if there were multiple stores that Jeremy here could go to. And then PTO hours remaining, the ability to create a new PTO request. Not going to go through that ability here of creating it, but just to click the button, it opens up this field and then would say uh, some selections like traveling on a plane. Is there any further need to quarantine before returning to a store? And then there's a approval functionality on top of this of you can see here in the status, this one has been approved and when they're eligible to return to work. All of this functions, of course, in the back end in, in order to create this staffing plan directly in Anaplan. So we've covered what the, the arrangement of the employees and when they are available to work. The next piece here is what's required in different scenarios by day. So here we have our drop down here is Sunday. So by day based on, uh, this could be based on footfall traffic or demand at individual stores. What is actually required at the store in order to meet that demand? So here we have this input driven. So within the distancing practices, and then with a steady scenario, what's required for customer service, what's required for stockroom re replenishment, and then also for pickup. So we have hours applied by each of these work zones, by the hours in the day, in order to create the, the staffing plan on the next dashboard. So again, this is by day, so a different pivoted view of the function, and then also the day and hour of the day where individuals are required to make the store function. And then on this final dashboard here, we've gone through creating those scenarios. We've gone through getting the employee roster right in Anaplan. And then we've also brought in a demand plan in order to, to meet the sales revenue goals. So Irons entered some PTO on some previous dashboards. That was a different interaction with the model. And then we select a scenario here, which scenario we're going to go with. And this is by day. So if we select maybe things return to normal. And then we use the Anaplan optimizer in order to run this process. So this combines all of the data that we've gone through so that demand plan, an employee's availability, the employee's PTO, the employee roster, which, was, which we went over in a previous webinar, and now down to an actual store level. Now we've gotten away from that bulletin board staffing. So now we have a suggested, based on our scenarios, weekly schedule for each employee by each ind individual store in order to meet the demand plan. So really holistically, top to bottom have combined demand plan with the sales revenue targets, with some of the employee attributes and their interaction with that, and have created now a 
weekly schedule for employees, factoring in things like you see here Wednesday and Thursday overtime for irons to make up for that PTO time. Yeah, and as we discussed before, the benefits you know, mentioned are expected outcomes connecting the enterprise, data driven staffing, the ability to better retain your workforce, and this trust in data can really be accomplished through something like this, where it's just a connection across the enterprise of a bunch of different data sources. Then you start looking towards the future and seeing ultimately connecting this type of process from a finance perspective allows finance to have better data, which creates better forecasts for sales and the associated workforce expenses to support those sales by stores for the different scenarios that the stores are able to adjust from that original demand plan, as Stephen illustrated. In addition to that, you think about other things like variable compensation that could be tied to stores or other data points that just make your life as a finance professional easier by just continuing to connect the enterprise and have better data to be able to forecast real time and analyze that. So each of the stores can look each week and, and make adjustments based on what they see and measurements they see or reporting that's set up to they're able to see each week. So this adjusted demand forecast and scheduling just continues to get better because you have all the data in one place. So with that, that takes us to the end of the demo here.